Are Europeans in grave danger if the EU doesn't step up its support for Ukraine? And has the EU been weakened over its lack of unity on the situation in Gaza? President of the European Council, Charles Michel, is my guest on the Global Conversation on Euronews. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Really appreciate your time. 46% of voters saying that they want less influence by the European institutions, the European Council, the European Commission, and more power, particularly going to national governments. Why do you think that is? Do you think that represents some sort of failure by the institutions, a lack of perception? No, I, I'm not surprised. But uh, on the other hand, I know that for many people across the EU, they know, for instance, if we face COVID-19, that uh, the answer, the solution will be at the European Union's level. If there is an energy crisis, if there is inflation, if there is a challenge related to climate change, we need more European cooperation and, and coordination. And I think it is a mistake to, to try to oppose the national level and the European Union's level. If we have strong member states, if we have a strong European Union's project, then it will be good and positive for all our citizens across the EU. And on that issue of delivering and peace in Europe, you said yesterday that if we don't give Ukraine enough support now to stop Russia, that we here are next. Now, we have heard this a lot over the past two years, but it is something that is resurgent. We heard, for example, the Spanish defence minister saying she said she doesn't think that people realise the grave danger we're in right now. Why are you saying that right now? What evidence do you have and what are you calling for? First, I feel that we must tell the truth to the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are facing a, a serious challenge with this decision made by Russia to invade um, Ukraine. And it's not only uh, a challenge for the Ukraine, it's a challenge for all of us, all of those who believe uh, in the fundamental principles, in the democratic principles. And I'm absolutely convinced that this is a, a serious uh, threat. And that's why I think that uh, we did and we are doing what's needed. And we have immediately decided and we are united uh, to support Ukraine mm -hmm. uh, and to sanction Russia, to put pressure on Russia. But this is not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to do more. We need to, be, to, 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 to act more quickly. And that's why, once again, we'll try to make concrete steps to provide more military equipment to Ukraine, uh, more financial support uh, for Ukraine, and to put more pressure uh, against um, uh, Russia. And this is needed if we believe uh, in peace and, and security uh, and uh, prosperity, uh, which are the promises of the founding fathers of this European project. But you're going much beyond that. You're calling for a war economy, essentially the mobilization of all sectors of the economies throughout Europe. It's a fundamental shift in the structure of societies. Yes, and you're absolutely right that uh, I, I want us to do more. Why? Because if we, have, if we, we observe the last decades, uh, this European Union's project was based on the idea that we have common values and that we need to cooperate for more prosperity. We all of us understand that we need to adapt our economic model. We need to invest much more in our defence industrial base to protect uh, our stability and our security. But why are you saying a war economy now? Is it because the situation in Ukraine, that there's a stalemate, that there doesn't seem to be any significant gains predicted for Ukraine in the coming year? Uh, on the one hand, I think it's very good that the Ukraine they, uh, succeeded uh, to resist and to push back. But it's not enough. They succeeded to take uh, more control in the Black Sea. This is very important. We don't talk so much about that. But from a strategic point of view, this is important. But on the other hand, today, this is not a secret that uh, Russia is in a stronger position from a military point of view in terms of ammunition and military treatment. Mm -hmm. And that's why there is this sense of urgency and that we need to provide more military treatment now, not in two years. It will be too late in two years. This is now, and that's why this is very concrete. We support, for instance, this Czech initiative. I, I commend this decision made by the Czech authorities to, uh, uh, to, to, to propose to many other countries uh, to purchase together military equipment so that very quickly uh, this equipment can be delivered to Ukraine. Okay, well, I want to move on to another major issue which is the situation in the Middle East because obviously part of your role as President of the European Council is to build consensus on com complex issues amongst EU member states and we're seeing quite heartbreaking scenes in Gaza at the moment as a result of Israel's response to Hamas's brutal terrorist attack against Israelis on October 7th. 
But we're hearing things like starvation used as a method of war, as Joseph Borrell has said, monumental death toll on children, the lack of basic medical supplies for amputations. Has the EU been weakened by this? Do you feel that there may be double standards, that there's not as much unity or sympathy for Palestinians as there is for Israeli civilians, Ukrainian civilians? First, I'm observing that we are more and more united at the European Union's level. But we should tell the truth, this is uh, exactly at, at the beginning, uh, following this uh, attack launched by the uh, Hamas, we were on the same page to condemn Hamas, uh, there is no doubt that this is a, a, a terrible, a tragic attack. But on the other hand, it was more difficult to have a unanimous position in the European Council on the topic. Why? Because our member states, uh, they have their own uh, uh, relationship with Israel, with Palestine, their own uh, history. But what's very important is the fact that we are making huge progress, and I'm very confident that in a few days we will get united with a very strong message based on two or three fundamental pillars. First one, humanitarian access, notable standards. Each civilian life matters. It must be extremely clear and each communication from the EU should be crystal clear on that uh, topic if we want to be credible at the international uh, level, point one. Point two, we must do everything to avoid any further uh, regional escalation. Uh, Lebanon, mm. uh, Red Sea, uh, it is extremely important to do everything from a political and diplomatic point of view. And point three, uh, we are fully in support of the two-state solution. And on this topic, 27 member states uh, are agreeing without any ambiguity on this important question. But do you feel that there has been double standards. No, I feel, uh, we, 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 I'm very sincere with you. Uh, on COVID-19, we did very well. On climate change, we are setting the tone, we are setting uh, standards and others that are following us. The war against Ukraine, we succeeded to get uh, united and to have a strong position. On the Middle East, I accept uh, the criticism following which it took more time uh, to be united because the starting point is so that uh, th there are differences uh, between the member states. But in a few weeks, in a few months, we are in a position to make significant progress and the trends, this is the unity, the direction, this is uh, the, the unity. Uh, and uh, this is true that when there were some ambiguous communications mm. uh, from the EU leadership, it has been used and it is used uh, by Putin, by the Kremlin, uh, to fuel this idea of uh, so-called uh, Western hypocrisy. And I engage a lot, uh, you know, with uh, uh, African, uh, with some uh, countries in the global south, like Africa, Latin America, Central Asia. And I can feel that those countries they are uh, expecting us on the EU side to be very clear to promote always and everywhere the international law and the rules-based order, including in the Middle East. Okay, well, President of the European Council, Charles Michel, thank you very much for joining thank us you. and being our first interviewee on the Global Conversation this evening. Thank you.